So, <clears throat> you want to move that. We'll begin the process of removing the motherboard. So, I don't have to take this out, but I'm going to take it out anyways just because it's fun. And we'll take this piece out. Take this piece out. And we will remove the fan assembly here. Now the fan assembly is out. Let's see, we take off the SLI bridge here. Off that. And we need to slide this out just a little bit. So we'll slide that out. Fact, we have to take off these cables. So those cables there. Disconnect these cables right there. This is off. PCI. So take the graphics card out. That graphics card is out. Okay. We need to remove the connectors here. These are the power connectors for the, the motherboard. And we'll bend those over the side like that. And now we'll just simply begin removing cables here and here and here. Cables right here. Now, it's always easiest to remove all the hard drives. So we'll take all the hard drive bays out. Notice too that we include hard drive um, carriers even if we're not, not used. So when the customer wants to upgrade, all they do is buy the hard drive and it plugs it right in. So remember I said this little fan assembly back here was kind of the critical area and there's two little green spots right here. Um, this one does not have a blind mate, so it does require me to unplug the fan from the motherboard. There's two little connectors right down there. But all I, did, all I need to do is press that, and this fan assembly comes out. So once again, no screws, and I can replace this fan assembly. But you see, right down here, these tabs. These tabs go right against the motherboard, right down on the bottom here, and hold the motherboard in place. And uh, the easiest thing is to always move your cables out of the way. And so I always like to just organize all my cables and put them out of the way just so that they're easy to to manage in terms of keeping the cables kind of nice and clean. There's one big power connector on the bottom here that just needs to be slid out and I always like to put that in the side there. Pull that in the side there and then there is a connector back here that needs to come off. There's the motherboard. So, and did I use any tools? Nope. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. My fingers. All I used was my fingers. So that's how simple it will be. Now, th we did not design this for the customer to replace the motherboard. That was not the intent. The intent was to make this very simple in the manufacturing so that when you install the motherboard, it was easy. Also, if we do have a failure, and we have very few failures, but if we do, to replace the motherboard by our service technician when they come on site is very easy for them as well. They don't have to remember what tools do they need, what screws, what Torx screws do they need. No, all they know is they need these tools which they always have with them yeah. and they can replace the motherboard. So again, it really improves the serviceability, it improves the customer satisfaction because you know that things are going to get re re repaired very quickly. And as I said, the motherboard is held in place, there are these little standoffs, as we call them, these little pins right here. And if you look inside the motherboard, there are slots. There are specially designed slots for which it fits into. And you drop it into that hole and then it slides to the back of the chassis and that's what holds the motherboard in place. When this is then placed in, in there in, in addition, it basically is holding the motherboard completely in place and it can never come out. 